Hi, and welcome to this video series, um, first installment. Uh, so the first uh, use case I wanted to take a look at is this best quote use case. Um, so the flow is fairly simple. So this is conceptual model. Um, somebody requests the quote, sends it to um, some kind of broker which in turn fans it out and requests a quote from each of these vendors, um, aggregates the results, meaning that it will get back the quotes from each one of these vendors, pick the best quote for uh, the user and present or send back basically that best quote to the user. So far so good. Okay, so what can that look like in an event sourced way um, and I'm kind of shying away a little bit from um, from the um, components that sit in between or the software that sits in between but I want to focus a little bit more on um, the more basic constructs that you will find in an event source design which are which streams do we store in which events do we actually store and uh, what's our interaction with uh, the outside world. So we're looking at um, the event store DB instance of this particular broker. So when somebody requests a quote, uh, we turn around basically and within the specific quote, here's this 123, in quote stream 123, we store an event called um, quote requested and in the background that triggers a workflow uh, specific to that quote uh, which will take care of um, getting the best quote for that request from these particular vendors. So that workflow is initiated by um, the quote requested event and then decides to send out basically um, three uh, quote requests to each one of these vendors um, and through some magic software um, we actually make the calls to those uh, vendors and the vendors respond to us and we also record within this workflow basically we record um, each one of the quotes um, note that it's not because we send out the quote to the vendor one first that will get it the response first. Um, so these might actually happen um, in parallel and we might get them in a random order. Um, but our workflow at least documents each time we received such a quote. And so once we receive the final quote, the third quote in this case, uh, we select the best one and we publish an event called, hey, this request was quoted. Uh, and the best one was vendor number two. Uh, and we've completed our workflow. We also keep a copy basically of this quoted event uh, in this um, quote one, two, three stream. Um, and so some of the mo motivations for this design is that we're putting a max age on this workflow stream over here, which has all the minute detailed steps. Um, which we don't want to keep around for more than a month because then that's when the diagnostics uh, period uh, is kind of over with. Um, meaning that the relevant events that we want to keep basically, so the pivotal events here is the fact that somebody requested a quote and that we actually came up with a quote for them um, at that point. So what are some of the capabilities that we've just leveraged in this uh, particular design? Well, um, we've used fine-grained streams, like quote123 and quote123 workflow are fine-grained streams. We used ephemeral streams because we kind of indicated that we don't want to keep this workflow stream forever, uh, at least none of the events um, uh, past uh, one month's time. Um, we have the immutable log in the sense that 
for the duration of that one month, basically, we have a fairly detailed log. And after the one month, we still have the relevant log, I would say. Um, ordering is somewhat present. It's not global ordering. Um, I mean, there is global ordering, obviously, in the product. Um, but we're mostly piggybacking off of local ordering within the stream, um, because that's good enough for this uh, solution. Um, there's a heavy reliance on causation and correlation. Correlation, you can think of, that tells the whole story. Uh, so if I basically pick one of these events and I ask for, give me all the events that are correlated to the same correlation ID, I will get all of them. Um, causation, on the other hand, is the arrows basically pointing from one event to another. So I know that this uh, event was caused by this event. Um, in fact, all three of these events are caused by this event. Um, so it's a more direct relationship, if you will. But it is important to tie everything together um, in this design. We're also using persistent subscriptions to uh, move data between streams inside the system, but also outside the system. Outside the system, I would say, in the future, uh, connectors will be a prime candidate to replace these persistent subscriptions. Similarly, here, here when we finally publish the quoted event, we also use a persistent subscription here to um, keep a copy of that into this um, stream over here. OK, so we might want to look at, um, let me see here. into a more granular, well, not granular, an alternative design um, in the sense that um, we kind of assume that everything would be working fine and dandy with all of these vendors. Um, they all respond in time. They're all online. Um, having dealt with computer systems, you all know that's a big lie. Uh, sometimes systems are down, uh, sometimes things do not respond, there's bugs, uh, there's all kinds of reasons why um, uh, there might be a problem. And our workflow here basically recognizes that. So um, what it does basically, there might be some SLA uh, onto the amount of time you have to quote within. Uh, it might be expressed in days, it might be expressed in hours or uh, minutes, um, whatever be the case. Um, whenever this uh, quote uh, requested comes in, basically, we also schedule a message called quote due, um, which will be delayed delivered to our workflow again, uh, allowing us to make a decision at that point. Meaning in this particular case, we received the quote from vendor one and two, but not yet from vendor three. Um, so when quote is due, we just pick from the two that we received, and that's the best quote at that point in time, and publish the quoted event. At some point in time later, we might still receive from vendor three the quote they came up with. We might still record that as well, but we're not going to act upon it. Um, this too is insight into the system, right? As knowing when uh, these messages uh, uh, came in. Uh, what capabilities did we use here? Well, um, we don't have a built-in scheduler capability for this delay delivery, so we kind of have to outsource it at this point in time. Uh, so the only difference is that we're also using a persistent subscription basically to set that up and making sure that this uh, quote due message um, gets delivered on time back to the workflow. Is that the only design we could come up with? No. Nope. Um, I have a more convoluted example here uh, where we kind of make different trade-offs. Um, in the sense that we don't just have the quote one two three stream and the quote one two three workflow stream, but we also have a vendor outbox stream per vendor 
and a vendor inbox stream per vendor. These streams we might qualify as integration streams. They usually have data across workflows. So uh, while this stream pertains to this quote, basically, uh, these outboxes might have multiple requests for multiple quotes uh, from multiple different people, but they're more focused basically on the affinity we have with the vendor. Um, that gives us um, a little bit more control uh, when we look at it from a persistent subscription point of view. Um, let's suppose vendor one is out, I don't know, for a day, uh, for a few days. Um, we might basically say, let's turn off as a mitigating, mitigating solution, turn off basically the persistent subscription in sending these messages out. Um, that means that we will not get the responses back. That's fine. That's innate to the design here, uh, which is that some vendors might give us a quote and others uh, might give us a quote. So whether it's for technical reasons or because they cannot give us the best price, um, that's fine, I would say, in, in this uh, design. Um, it also opens up the door to transformation because right here, basically, we can have a stored transformation of uh, the shape that we need to send to the vendor. Um, a vendor might be talking XML, uh, JSON, uh, protobuf, or some other serialization format, or they might talk something that's fairly uh, industry specific. Um, and this might be different on a per vendor basis. So that gives us an axis, basically, of uh, transformation and storing that transformation and being able to look at uh, the things that we send to a vendor, so helping out with diagnostics in that case. Similarly, on the way in, basically, that's where the inbox is sit. So when we get back the quotes, um, we can store them um, in each vendor's um, inbox. And from that inbox, we can fan out to the corresponding workflow um, that they pertain to. That obviously assumes that we have enough information traveling through the whole system to allow us to perform that sort of correlation. Um, another benefit of doing that, so is that, I said, we're able to transform the outside representation to a more suitable inside representation for our particular system. Imagine, for example, that the quote has a lot of fields on there which we do not want to offer to uh, in our system. Um, at that point, we might keep the, um, the raw uh, uh, quote as it came from the vendor and transform it uh, before uh, putting it into our workflow or into our quotes uh, stream. Additionally, we can also play with how long we want to keep these streams around. Maybe a week's worth is uh, more than enough, whereas the workflows we want to keep around a little bit longer. Um, so we can kind of play with the um, duration for which to keep these around. And then finally, mapping that onto our capabilities is um, not much new, I would say, is that we could use projections in this case to fill the outboxes um, instead of a persistent subscription. Um, so that would be totally a good use case for projections, uh, to be honest. So with that in mind, uh, I hope I demonstrated uh, how fast you can go from uh, an conceptual model, basically, to a more event-sourced model and how that maps onto um, the capabilities we have in our product. Um, if you have any suggestion for a use case that you'd like to see me tackle, uh, please feel free to respond in the thread and I'll do my best to come up with one. Thank you for watching.